Coaches, we're going to talk about defence, and I think we need a philosophy of defence for your team. That could be win the ball back to score tries, which involves going forward, increasing pressure, forcing errors, winning possession, so that you can score those tries from turnover ball. That's the big picture. So what do we need to cover? Let's get emotional. You, the coach, needs to be on edge when you're coaching defence because your team's character is epitomised by its defence. Defence starts with disrupting the opposition's set-piece ball, then winning the game line, having impenetrable line defence, and then being organised and ruck and back four defence. And you need to add excellent individual tackle technique. So let's now build a defence system. So guys, what we're going to do now is, is work on a very basic start of line defence. So we just want to make sure that we maintain the integrity of the line. And what does that mean, Heifer? Uh, just everyone coming up at the same time. Yeah, so we're all on the same line and we don't get ahead of each other. All right, so nobody gets ahead or nobody gets behind. So we maintain the integrity of the line. What else do we have to do to to defend well as a line defence. We need to talk, don't we? So we need certain words that we use all the time. It might be push, it might be forward, it might be hold and push. When would you hold and push? Overlap. Yeah, when they've got more numbers than you. All right, so if they've got four and you've got two, how do you defend four on two? So that's when we'd hold and push. So the right communication is important. So what I want you to do, I want... Simon and Hepper, the two halfbacks, to run it. I want them to, to move like an attacking line, burst six, and I want you to push, come forward, communicate, and maintain the, that integrity of the line. Okay? Good. 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 Beautiful. We're going to extend that, so we're going to have four guys who are taking the halfback's place, so they're going to be the four attackers. And, they, and you're going to defend a line defence with the rest of you. So what I would like to see now is the same communication, but I want two guys in on the ball carrier. So you're going to have a ball, you're going to pass it around, okay, attack the line occasionally, and I want a tackler and an assist on the ball carrier. Let's just to start with that. So Red's to here, other guys defending. Nope, let's spread out a bit. Spread, spread. Good. Good. Talk, talk. Good. Good, stop. We just increase the intensity a bit. All right, so we get plenty of line speed. How's the integrity of the line? Jagged. Jagged. Yeah, so we've got to make sure that the two guys who are the tacklers, that we maintain the integrity from there. So we just look at that, just get, your, get in line so that you know what you're doing. Just have a bit more spread. So what's the importance of the guy on the outside? What do you have to do? Keep back. Yeah, so you need to be behind the guy inside you. And if you're the last guy on the line, I think quite a bit. So you might take three metres, do that. And the guy on the end of the line, what's your job? Communicate. Yeah, what else? To keep the integrity of the line. So you just need to make sure you stay behind the guy inside you. So if we can keep that going all the time, I think we'll be superb, OK? So we just add another attacker, put another shirt on. Inside, 
Just got to maintain that integrity. Some guys are getting in front of others. All right, so just keep discipline there. So you're behind the guy inside you. Okay, well done. Let's go. Up, 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 up. Now we'll just change it a bit. Um, two more guys on the attack line. Two put red tops on. I think coaches, you've got to do quite a bit of this in line integrity work. I know it seems simplistic, but if you do it well, you're not going to have the chinks in your defensive line when you come to the game. It can be used as a warm-up exercise, just making sure that guys stay behind the fellow inside them, and two players on the ball carrier, all right? The tackler and the assist, and the modern interpretation of the law, if you throw too many in there, you're going to be outnumbered when they have the ball anyway. So, and if they cause some problems in there, all the better. So the tackler and the assist on the ball. We, what we need to do now, guys, is to extend it a bit. So we'll have six attackers versus four defenders. So I want some double touches, okay? I want some, some loops. I want some behind balls. So throw the ball behind the guy outside you to the next fella, just to test the defense, okay? So we'll break up the game you just use your imagination. You know, it might be a cut, might be an inside ball, whatever. Once you touch, put the ball on the ground, and we'll go again from that ball on the ground. Good, two in, two in. Ball on the ground. Let's go. Good, go how can we improve on that? More talk? Yeah, I didn't think the talk was too bad. Just make sure the uh, talk's relevant. So a push up, all right? One, one glaring weakness, I thought. What do you think that would be? No, I don't mind the intensity. I don't want to just smash each other here. All right? Any other ideas what that glaring weakness would be? So our line speed needs to be a lot quicker. So we're talking, line speed's up. Now that might be intensity, whoever said intensity, but I think if we get our line speed up, it puts these guys under pressure to perform, okay? So more line speed. Let's go, same thing. Go! Up, 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 Good. But you got off the line, you kept your, I think, reasonable integrity. <laughs> from where I was standing. So it's pretty good integrity, so you kept your, your line right, and didn't, get, didn't have a jagged line, so that was good. We're gonna give uh, these guys the um, time to attack, all right, and you guys the time to defend, and we'll go from there, okay? Up, up. Good. Good. So I want the tackler to identify himself by making the tackle and the guy inside him be the assist. So what do you think the, the tackler's job is to do? Winning the contact. Yeah, winning the contact. So I don't want you to be over, over vigorous here. So I want you to win the contact, which means taking the, the ball carrier backwards. And what is the assist job, do you think? Stop the offload. Good boy. So the assist job is to, is to go for the pill if he can. All right, so he, he looks for the ball and ties up the ball if he can. Why the guy inside, do you think? Why should the assist be the guy inside the tackler? Giving them more space on the other side. You should be the coach and I should be in there. That's very good. 
Okay, so that's what we'll do. So we've got an attacking team and a defensive team. Let's go. Stop. Getting better all the time. I just think now that we just got to increase, somebody said before, just increase that intensity in the tackle. So we get that guy going backwards. If we get him going backwards, we win that contact, then the assist can do his job, can't he? So we just increase that intensity. And I think you need to be a bit lower. We need to get shoulders on. So we're, we're chest tackling at the moment. So let's just get a bit of shoulder on. I don't want you to smash each other, but just increase the intensity a wee bit. And then I think that will solve any little clink, any little clinks in the armour that we've got. Go! Good attack on the fence. Work hard. Work, talk. Give up! Good. Come across, come across. Good. Good. Well done. Up. 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 Up.
together as a line, holding it. Yeah, so we don't have any chinks in the armour. So we're all in the line, the guy on the outside, just a wee bit behind the guy on the inside. So we maintain that integrity all the time. What else do we know about line defence? Yeah, a lot of talk. So a push, push, up, push, all right, hold, push. Okay. What else do we know about line defence? Speed, line speed. Very good. So the quicker the line speed, the better. Because you're going to be the defenders. I've asked them to, to track and hold rather than track and tackle. These guys are going to try and open up that line defence. Okay, so we'll go from, from the set piece to the first tackle and play off the first, first tackle and then I'll tell you to stop and we'll go to another set piece. Go! Play it, play it. I think it's important, coach, is that you have a policy, depending on where the scrum is, all right? And in that particular scrum there, we had the halfback acting as the first person in line defence. So it's important that there's communication between the nine and the flagger who's likely to be seven on who they're responsible for. Okay? So I think that's important. So every time you go to a set piece, you know who's responsible for who. Stop. I think coaches and players, it's important if we're going to go into an exercise where it's track and hold, we actually hold. You with me? Otherwise it just becomes a shambles and they get in behind us and then the whole defensive line disintegrates. So track and hold on the attack, all right? and then marry up with the numbers. So you're scanning and marrying up with the numbers so we've got a good line once again. Go! Oh. Good! Right, right. Stop. Let's go to far side scrum. So what do we want that scrum to do here? Turn onto the blind side so they only have that option. Yes, yeah, so we want to try and get what prop up here as and a defending loose loose head, loose head. Loose head. Yes, so we want to get the loose head up and by getting the loose head up and creating that angle, what does that help us do? Promote the flanker. Promote the flanker. Beautiful. We've got all the answers, fellas. And what's number nine going to do? Be on the eight if it turns that way because I can go right up to the ball. So he's going to put pressure on eight and nine. Okay? And he's going to communicate with, with the right winger just to make sure that we've got that covered as well. So we're promoting the seven by the angle. We're promoting the seven. Nine's got his job on the right hand side of the scrum. And seven and ten are communicating on width. All right? So, ten, are you taking ten? Yeah. I don't know if he cuts. He'll take the cutter. Gregor. Okay. If there's a blind side winger inside 10, what are you going to do then? I'll hold on him. Hold on first man. So you'll hold on 10 and... Uh, it depends how wide they are, really. If they're quite if they're quite close, I'd probably hold on the... Uh, he might be able to make that first tackle, but if they're wide, then he's never going to make that first man, so I'd probably mark up on the blind side and then put our second five on the first five. I think the important thing, Coach, is to realise that there's a number of ways of doing this, but we've got to have a set way. It may be different from one team to another. So in this particular case, if blind side winger and the attacking side is inside 10, we're going to have 10 on 10 and make sure that our flanker who is promoted looks after that blind side winger. As long as we're all in sync here, I think that's important as a defensive side coaches. Everybody understands what we're trying to do. Because this is the hardest scrum in the, in the game to defend. It gives the attacking side a, a lot of advantages. Okay, let's do it, fellas. Okay. Hold it. Hold it. Break, break, break. Good. All right. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. 
Guys, I think um, the midfield scrum, we need a policy also. And I assume that we're going to use nine as the first defender on the line. How can we promote our defence at the scrum? For a midfield scrum, how can we promote that defence? Go forward on the scrum? Yeah. If we go forward and put a lot of pressure on them, it's going to give our line defence an advantage, isn't it? So we're going to put more pressure on them because they're going to be hesitant and it'll take a while to get the ball out of the back of the scrum from the halfback to the first receiver. So if we go forward, it makes a huge difference. And then we need a set policy of who's defending who. And in this case, we're going to have nine on the short side, okay, as a defender in the line. So it's a different scrum, defence from the scrum on our right-hand side of the field. Let's try that just to finish off the scrum defence. That's good, fellas. Good attack structure and good defence structure. Coaches, like the scrum, I think you need to have some knowledge of the opposition line-out. The types of line-outs, whether they're fulls or reduced, and the launches and strikes they do from those line-outs. Now, if you look at the full line-outs, are they 52 and 43s? What I mean by that is, have they got five and two, which is a 52? Or have they got a structure which is four and three? And therefore, if you know those structures previously, you can set up your, your defence system against those lineouts. Now, often, they're the same from week to week. The opposition are using the same, so you can use the same defensive structure. Do they use a five-man lineout? And how are you going to set your defensive structure up against that five-man lineout to compete? So I think that's the first thing you do. And the second thing you do is you look at the launches from those lineouts and make sure that if there's anything that they do exceptionally well, that you've got a defensive policy that can handle those particular launches. Um, the next thing, I think, is the communication bef between your back defender and your fly half or your number 10 and how they're going to defend together. And I think that's very critical. Uh, we make sure there's not too much space between them. And I think the second thing is dependent on where the opposition blindside winger is. So if we're looking at the opposition here, and they've got 9 to 10, and um, they have their blindside wing inside 10, you may have a defensive policy that 7's on blindside winger and 10's on 10. If the blindside winger shifts... And so he's further out in the field. He's wider than 10, maybe wider than 12. You may play man on, 10 on 10 and push. And so seven looks after 10 and we play from there. Now, I just need to explain that. I think you should play man on push rather than man out. So it's a late push and seven looks after 10 and 10 looks after 12 and so on. So I think you need to be organized on all of those things. Defensive policy from line out, and that will be dependent on where the blindside winger is standing, the attack blindside winger. So if he's inside 10, we'll play man on, 10 versus 10 against 10, and use our ta tail gunner to look after that blindside winger. If the blindside winger is wider, we can push one more. You'll ask me what happens about the cut. Well, if 12 cuts with 10 and blindside wingers wide, the 10 will take the cutter. I don't know if we've covered all the angles there. Hopefully we have. But use your imagination. That's why you're a coach. Good luck. Coaches, the blindside winger's got the red bib on. And where our defensive pattern is dependent on what his actions are. Holding. Holding. Hold, hold, hold. 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 Hold, hold.
Good. Let's go to the other side and do one more. Make sure you put pressure on them at set piece. Contest the ball at line out, right angles at scrum, go forward at scrum. So that gives our line an advantage. So we can get up and put real pressure on them. So with good line speed. And that we've got a policy of who's responsible for who. And that communication is very important between the number seven at line out and scrum and our first defender in the back line. So if we've got that right, then all we have to worry about is having our integrity right, our line defense right, and making the tackle. Okay? So that communication is vital. Well done. Good start. One of the important things about line defence is the ability to work hard in small numbers when they've got numbers and communicate uh, to try and nullify the attack. So we're going to start with that exercise. It's a line defence exercise. We're going to have four guys defending nine. So that's a big ask. So we'll start with that exercise and then we'll increase the defensive numbers. What I'd like to see is that they don't get beaten down the middle of the field, only get beaten on the flanks, okay? The other thing I'd like to see that none of the defenders get taken out by, by a runner, a non-catching a non runner, if you like, who's obstructing them. So they avoid him and keep him in the defensive line. So away we go, fellas. <laughs> Good. Four verse nine. What's the impression here? Open wide. Yeah, but what can we say about the defence here? We can together. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing what four guys can do if they work hard and talk defending nine players. And it doesn't matter what level you are, whether you're six-year-old or international footballers. So it's amazing what ground four defenders can cover if they work together and don't get taken out by the obstructing runner. So that was a great exercise, all right? Let's just change, change it over a bit. So we'll play eight attackers versus six defenders. Okay, so that's going to make it more difficult for the attacking side. I'll give you one minute to score as many tries as you can. So we're going to kick it off. It must The kick must land inside the 22 area, and you attack, the eight attackers attack. As soon as you've scored a try, you take the ball out to the five-meter line here in front of the sticks and attack again. And you've got one minute to score as many tries as you can. Okay, let's go. Go, 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 go. Oh, yeah. Two. Yeah. Oh, 
Very good. What was good about that? Apart from very good defence, only two tries scored. But what was good about that? We should have had the world watching this. Good talk, good identification of space. Not one error. Not one drop ball. Am I right? Outstanding. So that's very special. And it just shows you what six can do with eight. Go! good guys so it just it just ticked all the boxes that we needed to tick you know there was a lot of hard work lots of communication tremendous accuracy which I was very impressed with and you only got beaten down the guts once the only times they looked like scoring was on the outside apart from one clever little fellow got in under the sticks all right but it was two tries each good exercise on how to line defense uh, when you're lacking in numbers so superb now, do you want to have a bit of a final? Nope. <laughs> we'll do it after the training run, shall we? We'll have a final after the training run. The guys who win, the ice cream's from the guys who lose, eh? And two for the coach. <laughs> the key really is a lot of communication, a lot of hard work, and don't be taken out by obstructive runners. Always stay alive. So if you can get those three things together, um, you'll have a pretty good defence so, because it shows technique, it shows heart, and it shows ability to communicate. Now, to add to the line defence, we're just going to make sure that we've got our defence right at the tackle, at the breakdown, and we'll just, we'll just test this defence because I think if you get this part of your defence right, it's very important as a prelude to your line defence from the breakdown. So we'll call this the ruck, all right? Let's just set it up. So we've got first defender, second defender, lead defender. Good. Well done. We try the other side just to keep them honest. How do you think we can improve this heart defence? Upping our line speed. Yeah, I think we're too slow off the blocks. So let's make sure we're up and then out so we're, we're off the line quickly. How else can we improve? More talk, identifying who you are in the defensive line. Very good. Outstanding answer. So knowing who you are, all right? So if you're first defender, you know your role. I'm first defender. I'm one. I'm two. I'm lead. Okay, so you know your roles and you execute your role superbly. Okay, so we've got to be up for this. Let's do it. Good. Well done. We try the other side. Go. Good half back. Good. Notice that number nine taking that space. Outside second defender. So coaches. It's, it's all very well to do it on a stationary breakdown. And I think you need to practice that quite a bit 
And you can even slow it down. Slow it right down so guys know their roles. Even if you're only playing at 50% intensity, it's very important they know their roles, interchange people so they become first defender, can become second defender or lead defender, and do quite a bit of that, all right? But then go to the next progression where that breakdown defence is moving, and that really sorts people out. So that's what we'll do now. One, two, three. Hold him up, hold him up. Plant, plant. One, two, three. Plant. Good. Stop. That's good, guys. Your position's right. Just for the sake of the exercise, we need to hold these guys up, eh? All right, so we need to get shoulder on and hold. And then we know we're doing the, we're doing the business correctly. So I think you're right in position. I think you're talking well. Perhaps a wee bit more pace off the line, but hold them, all right? So um, shoulder on, hold and tackle. We'll go from the other side. So it's very important that these guys get shoulders on and hold up the def hold up the attackers so the drill works well. Go. Good. Well done. Good. Well done. One, two, three. Good. Play it again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. Quite a bit of intensity by the attack side and not as much intensity by the defence side, and that's what we're trying to do to defend here. But I think you've got the idea. But there's two progressions to that, a stationary uh, defence at the, at the breakdown and then going from ruck to ruck, which increases the intensity and increases the requirement on the defending players. So you can do both of those drills. That's what I